Good day, grade twelves. My name is Karen Mazokere, and I would like to welcome you to one of my lessons. I'm the author and publisher of the Distinction Bound Student Textbooks, and uh, this is a lesson where I'm explaining profit and loss for a perfect competitor. So, without wasting wasting much of your time, let's jump right into the lesson. Well, as usual, we start by looking at um, our axis, like we draw our graphs this way, we draw our axis first, we label the axis, and then from there, we all know that uh, this, uh, since I said uh, perfect competition, there's an individual producer who is taking the price from the market forces of demand and supply in the industry. So he is a price taker and is taking the price of 10 rand in this case. And uh, his demand curve is horizontal, indicating that he's a price taker. Uh, he can increase quant uh, output. He can, whatever it is that he does, it won't affect the price. Um, decision making by him is very insignificant in as far as affecting the whole industry is concerned. Um, I always give an example that if uh, you go to the ocean and you pee, in the ocean can you say oh guys look there's more water now because i just urinated in this ocean well it won't your your urine is insignificant in as far as the volume of water in the ocean is concerned it's very insignificant so the same applies to an individual producer in a perfectly competitive market because this is a market where there are many buyers and sellers producing homogeneous products so all those firms producing something that is identical, 100% identical, something like gold, it's identical. So you, you the price is determined by forces of demand and supply. And um, yeah, the price of gold will be gold per ounce. And it's universal in this case. Well, so since the individual cannot make decision decisions in as far as price is concerned, what decisions can this individual make? Well, to answer that question, this individual can make decisions in as far as um, uh, uh, quantity is concerned. This individual can decide how many units to produce. Well, but but he he won't just pick a number from his head and say, "Let me produce ten." No, the the the, the output produced is determined by the rule of profit maximization because it is obvious that every business is in it in business uh, because they want to make a profit and would you want to just make profit or make the most profit possible obviously you want to make the most profit uh, possible and for you to do that you have to produce at a profit maximizing point that means you have to apply the profit maximizing rule, which states that for a firm to produce, to maximize its profits, it has to produce at a point where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Well, so let's introduce our marginal cost curve. As you can see, that's how it's shaped. And uh, in this case, they intersect at point E. And that point E is not equilibrium, that point is or represents uh, what what should I say profit maximization or profit maximizing point and that point then gives us the profit maximizing output so in this case this firm should produce 10 units and sell at 10 rand each uh, and this 10 units is 10 can be 10 per hour per minute per day per month whatever the case is all we know, we, we don't have that information. The only information we have here is the firm should produce 10 units and sell a 10 rent per unit in order for them to maximize their profits. So if that if they do so, and having this information that we have on the graph right now, should we say, is the firm making a profit or loss? Well, if you have an answer to that question uh, and your answer is profit, you are wrong and if the answer is loss you are also wrong the correct answer is we don't know and i'm saying that uh, because nothing really informs us at this point in time nothing tells us whether it's more like saying 
if I sell my jacket for 200 rand, do I make a profit or loss? Well, we don't know. How much did I buy the jacket for? Okay, so that means something has to be introduced to this graph for it to, to be answerable, for my question to be answerable. So in this case, we put our average cost curve. And uh, as you can see, our average cost is equal to our average revenue. And according to our profit loss rules, yes, we know or that we can't really call it a rule. But when AR is equal to AC, we call it a normal profit. In this case, 10 minus 10. Uh, let me not be lazy. Let me show you. Okay, so AR minus AC. So in this case, is 10 rand minus 10. And that gives us zero. So this zero, or should we say when AR is equal to AC, the firm makes a normal profit. Or when we subtract AR from AC or TR from TC, we get zero. That means the firm is making a normal profit. So this firm can survive. It doesn't have to shut down. Moving on to the next one, we uh, I don't have to go through all the stuff I said, uh, except for the few things that I uh, that that we have on this graph that we didn't have on the previous one. Uh, well, something is different here. First and foremost, the price is five rand. Why is it five rand? Well, market forces tells us it's five rand. Well, we don't have them here, but whenever you see it like this, it means that this price is coming from the market forces of demand and supply, even though we don't have it in this graph, but we know that. So then we have our average cost up there. Uh, and and common sense tells you that if cost is high, then what is it that you're making? A loss, obviously. So I don't even have to uh, go too deep and explain what's going on here. Because look, common sense tells you we have um, revenue here at five rand. Cost, even though we don't know exactly how much that is, maybe it's 10. But cost is high. On average, to produce 10 units, it costs this person more than the, what they are getting. Because what they are getting is here, average revenue. So it's common sense here. Yes, it's 10. So this firm is making an economic loss of 5 rand per unit. And then if we say 5 times 10, so this firm is making 50 rand loss or 50 rand economic loss. Moving on to the next graph, same story. We have 10, we have profit maximizing point at E, and then we have 10 units being made, and then our cost is low, which is good news. So if your cost is low, try to think about it. Keep your cost low, and you manage to keep them low, and you might manage to keep your cost lower than your revenue. It means you are making an economic profit. Well, this brings us to probably no, no, no. Let me let me look at the graphs once more, all at the same time before I conclude. Well, if we look at this that we are having here, um, the difference. Well, our graphs are identical. Look at this. There is no way you can mess this up in an exam. Uh, you in an exam expect to find any of them. Well. I wouldn't know what they'll ask. They might ask you to draw from scratch. Now you know how to draw and you, you even know how to draw it the correct way. Like you start with this, then you go to that, then you go to that. You know that I explained. Now, the only difference, look, everything is identical except for, <clears throat> well, the price, yes, I didn't make it the same. I should have, I could have, but it doesn't really make any difference. What I just want to point out is that Almost everything is the same in this in these three graphs. The only difference is AC. Look, in this case, AC is high. In this case, AC is equal to AR. In this case, AC is low. So do you want your cost to be high? Do you want it to be the same? Or you want your cost to be low? Obviously, this is the best scenario you can have. This is the second best scenario. 
This is the worst scenario. But this scenario is not e enough. Uh, if we look at these three, let's say this is A, B, C. Do you think A should continue producing whatever it is that they produce? The answer is yes. Do you think B should continue producing whatever it is that they produce? The answer is yes. And don't tell me it's a zero. It is profit. And I'll explain, but not in this video. Should this, uh, should business C con uh, close, shut down? Well, I don't know. If you know, then you don't know what you're talking about. This firm is making an economic loss. Yes, we can see that. Clearly, we can see that. Yes, they are making an economic loss. But should this firm shut down? Well, if you say yes, they should, then you don't understand some of the rules. And I'm going to make a video explaining that particular rule. In this case, I'll leave it at I don't know whether this firm should shut down or not. But maybe let me explain why. But not deep though. The reason is because I don't know whether or not this firm can cover its variable costs. Uh, the rule states that the firm should consider shutting down if its price or AR is less or equal to AVC. So I don't know where it's the average variable cost curve is in this case. So I cannot really tell whether this, in other words, I'm saying there's missing information. I cannot answer the question until we draw the average variable cost curve. If the average variable cost curve is constructed, then now we can answer that question. But in this case, there is missing information and the question cannot be answered. As always, thank you so much. Uh, you guys are doing wonders uh, in terms of my channel. I, I, I would like to uh, appreciate, uh, continue to ask questions continue to watch videos, share with your friends, and it helps a lot. Thank you so much. Have a good day.